So here's the truth, T. I wrote a book. Finally got it done. So my book, Inglorious Inc., has been a process for me for the past three, three years of my life. We'll go with three. I can't do the year math in my head correctly. So three years I have been doing, working, bleeding, crying, and sweating over getting this book done. It all worked out because I am so proud of the achievement that I can say, I wrote a book, I'm a writer, I got it done, and now I have to do another one. But I'm not thinking about that quite yet. I'm just kind of enjoying the success that I got a book done and it's ready and people are reading it and I've been getting some feedback and that's primarily what I want. That makes me feel very accomplished. Let me tell you about my story. I will also be telling you the process of what it was like to publish since I've also gotten some questions of where I went and what I did. This was the process and what it's like because in the process there's some stuff that kind of went wrong for me and I know that no first process will be perfect but I would like to be able to give some people some insight of what to look out for before you hit that confirm publish button. So here we go. So Inglorious Inc. began as a process in on Memorial Day of 2017. I remember having an idea about tattoo artists and I wanted to write about them and I wanted to do something that was unique. And I remember the first draft that I comprised, oh, it's terrible. It was a girl named Aurora Anderson and she came to work at a tattoo shop that I think was just called Tattoo. Clever titling, I know. It's like if you're gonna call Finding Nemo fish. It was kind of getting into a bit of something like Cheers. It was pretty bad and very hunky-dory and then the second draft it just got violent So I found it kind of funny that the first draft was gonna be something very mild, you know Modern day slice of life hunky-dory all that jazz and then it just gets violent the story I don't know if many people know about this I know a lot of my friends know about this and it's been practically shoved in their faces and there's been an amend to the friendship contract that has said that I will forever be talking about my book. And here we go again. So I'm sorry. Not. This story is about a man named Lance Jackson that comes to Duran for a job. He ends up seeing a job wanted sign for Inglorious Inc. And he gets in, miraculously, he gets the job. Which, as a... Uh, normally how it would go for tattoo artistry, I don't think you get a job on the first day, but it's fiction, so... That's okay. And then as he begins his trials and shifts and beginning process as a tattoo artist for this business, he finds out that there is more than this business. There's another one, an underground illegal one that goes on. And he decides to stay, but there is a lot to this second business. And you wonder what will happen to him when he decides to stay. You also navigate through him the four other characters that are in the story, the four other people that work at Inglorious Inc. You have Lou, who is the owner, a no-nonsense man that looks like Billy Idol. And then you have Bullet, who is a crass lesbian and a gunshot survivor. And then you have Cassie and Jules, who are best friends and very codependent. Jules is violent and sneaky and ruthless. And then Cassie is very mild-mannered very methodic. She knows how to get shit done and she's also the receptionist for Inglorious Inc. So you got five people for this shop. When I began this process to work on the book, one thing that definitely had me terrified is am I going to piss off tattoo artists? That w quelled me so much because I've done my homework on when other things have been made fun of. Like one of the examples is Fifty Shades of Grey. It's mommy porn in a book but it completely bashes and ridicules with inaccurate information about the BDSM community. I know nothing about BDSM, and after seeing the documentary that Hulu put out to sort of save the name and the term for what it's like that Fifty Shades of Grey got it wrong, that's kind of what got me is I gotta make sure I get my information right. Watching a video or reading it online or reading articles online or going on Instagram, that's really not the same when you get to sit down and talk with someone. And I was willing to do that, but I was told to just go online and read their profiles. It's like, it felt like I was reading trading cards. Written information, but it wasn't 
personal information. And that kind of had me a bit in a slump. And I ended up contacting another tattoo artist that was willing to answer my questions. And he told me some stuff of what to do. And he actually gave me a sense of comfort saying that amidst my anxiety and worry about pissing off tattoo artists, he told me, well, yours is more character-based. I don't think you have to worry that much since it's the main concentration are the characters and tattoo artistry is just the, the side thing going on. It main things about them. And so I was like, okay, now I feel a bit better. I had to warn people in advance, specifically my grandfather's friends, three things. The fact that there is a lot of bad words. The word fuck is in there a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I'm sure it's in the 200s. I don't quite know yet. At the very end of this video, I'm going to be counting it, and I'm going to see for myself exactly how many times the word fuck is said. Um, I've also said that there are some gay characters in there, and sometimes older people aren't really comfortable with reading about LGBT characters. Just because it's the way the boomers are, I guess. But I thought if it would be unfair if I didn't mention that to know what they're not getting into. And the third and final thing I had to warn a lot of people about, which is funny and it's bad at the same time, but there is a character that exists in my book named Mitchell McConnell. And he, before you guys start freaking out, I did not know a couple things I need to address about that. Um, one, I did not know there was a real Mitchell McConnell. It just happened to be a name that came to mind. It had a good tie-in with the part of my story where there is a business called Mitchell's Mechanics. So it kind of like Peter Parker, Bruce Banner, it just had a good ring to it, unfortunately. And I remember telling my friend Mallow about this story and he goes, do you know there's a real Mitch McConnell, right? And I said, what? And I was so shocked and thinking, oh my God, I'm, I'm gonna be in so much trouble. So I had to address like, I have nothing against Mitchell McConnell, nothing at all. It was just a sheer accident. And I know one thing for sure, if I ever meet this man, I'm gonna shake his hand and go, nice to meet you, I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Some of the inspirations that really cultivated me into getting Inglorious Inc. the way that it is was my love of action movies and my love of crime and one thing of all, my love of the scrappy characters. The ones that will be knocked down, they'll get up and spit in your face no matter what happens. And I love characters like that because I've always felt that we hold ourselves back since one of the commentaries I make in my book, mainly that got this to be the way it is with the characters and how they are, is we take too much consideration of our consequences, or I should really say and reword it as, we think too much about what could happen, the actions of our consequences. Not extreme ones, but like little ones. For instance, like, oh man, I really want to cuss out Aunt Laura, but I gotta see her at Thanksgiving next year, that's gonna be extremely awkward. Or you really want to go off on someone, but you don't know how it's gonna turn out, and there's no continuation of the script you have going in your head, what the conclusion of that outcome could be. And it's terrifying. I would know. I've had moments I've wanted to do that and I've held myself back so much that I shouldn't have done it. But I do. And I still do it. But I have characters that do not give a fuck. And they will get in your face. They will tell you off. And they have, they don't care about that. They live basically knowing like, whatever, I'm gonna do it anyway. So now I have to go on to talk about the frustration of getting it uh, published. There were many routes that I was going to take with getting this book done. From what I was told, it's called Vanity Publishers, that they do offer and they make it look good. Kind of like car salesmen, they'll tell you like what it looks like and what it does and what they can offer you and then you buy it and then you get all this crap that's going on that you had no idea existed. Some stuff between the fine lines. And I'm not saying that all publishers are like that, but with something as precious as your own story to make sure that it is kept intact the way it needs to be and it doesn't belong to anyone else like when i heard the words inglorious ink belongs to us i felt my heart shatter i'm like what no no 
I ended up giving a very nice email later after saying, later after, later on, that said, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I'm going to be doing another route. And then I tried another publisher that I was sort of sold on. And it didn't seem too bad because they did say I would keep the rights to my book, which is fantastic. And when I was explaining to the lady, uh, when I happened to meet her in a coffee shop, and when she was telling me about her publishing place, that uh, the key word I'm just going to say here is Christian. And there is nothing Christian in this book that definitely put something aside. So when I explained to her what the plot was, and I always give the vague plot of it's about tattoo artists that run an underground business, and she goes, okay, so it's self-help, and I'm like, we'll go with that, okay? Uh, I, okay? I mean, they do help themselves, but, uh, um, I don't think it's the help you mean. And then I have to tell this very quick story. I went to go and try and find the office they have in my area of Virginia. I went on a wild goose chase in city center trying to find them, and I put in the address, and it was the same one I found a finance building. I walked in, and there's this one lady that looks so nice, and the other one looked like someone peed in her Cheerios. And I explained I was here to talk to someone about publishing a book, and she was very confused, and so was I, and I kind of had it very lax, like, I think I have the wrong building. And then the lady, the other one I mentioned, she said, you didn't try hard enough. And I'm thinking, bitch, man, so much for financing with you guys. So that had me very disheartened at that moment, but then I knew where I had to go next, and that was Amazon. We're finally getting to the point, and I am so sorry, but it's... I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, and I had to kind of give all the little tidbits and stuff, like I'm doing my own documentary. Documentary. God, my grandfather has ruined my grammar. My pal Ace, who is the one that helped me edit this book, He's been the biggest contributor. He's written in the acknowledgments for being one of the people to help me get through the whole process of publishing. And he did his through Amazon. And that has been the best process trying to get through it. You'll have a little bit of a trouble with the finance part at first because you have to answer all the finance stuff. But after that, it's a breeze. You get to have your own rights. You get to do it however you want. You get to make your own cover. They have cover creators available. You get to type whatever you want on the back. There are people that will email you immediately if you have a question because their phone number isn't up quite yet, but you will get a fast response in an email, which is nice. And it's not one of those like computer emails. It's like a thought out email which is nice. The process began to have it published as an ebook and then have it published as a paperback book. The ebook was done within like a day. And then the same thing for paperback, it was also within a day. I will have to mention one thing. Because of the fact this is a self-publishing option, and this is what I was explained of when I was told everything about Amazon, was because of the fact you're doing self-publishing, you have to monitor every single little thing. like. I can give an example of something that happened. There was some typos that happened. So, something that I didn't expect to happen, because I typed this up in WordPad, and uh, I don't know how it happened. I was confused, and my friend Ace is also confused because he's the one that edited and proofread it for me. And I'm gonna show you guys right now. I'm gonna try and see if I can get up close and personal as possible. But right about here, where it says, he doesn't interrupt, uh, I put an apostrophe there to tell myself, like, to put an apostrophe there. There is an I where the apostrophe is supposed to be. Somehow, someway, throughout the entire duration of the book, between chapters 5 and 22, there are apostrophes where the I is. So something happened in the transition process, so I have to tell you guys... If you have a certain program you're working with that isn't Microsoft Word or Google Docs, be very careful. It made me very mad to see all the typos because before I got my copies in the mail, my friend Tim met with me for coffee to congratulate me and I asked him if he could bring the book so I could see it. And when I opened up his copy of the book, I happened to see the typos that happened or the um, mistypes. That happened out of nowhere, and I'm like, that didn't happen like that. There's no way, because it happened 5 through 22. 
and I did give it a light proofread before I published it, but I only went through the first two chapters. And like I said, it happens between 5 and 22, which is an odd number for it to happen. Like it wasn't touched at all in the first four. Bizarre stuff. And um, another thing too, uh, writing on the back for this one for the uh, information box is another thing that kind of quells me. And the writing's very tiny and sometimes some stuff will get typed over. So when I was trying to write this part right here at the bottom, it says here, what really goes on when for an extra in what? Weird stuff. So that missed completely. I didn't see that happening at all because it was out of my power. So I didn't intentionally do that. So I had to send messages to all my friends like, hey guys, I'm so sorry that you guys got a book that has problems that I did not make or create. And it got there, and I remember telling my friend Ace, and he said he was sorry, and I'm like, what in the hell are you so sorry about? This is not your fault. And it's happened to be a tiny little screw up, but it's okay. What had me worried even more was when I got the batch of books inside, and I bought about 25 copies, and there are 25 copies of typos, and I'm like, oh my god. Please be very careful when it comes to the parts where it's going to be sectioned for new chapters because for some strange reason uh you see this chapter right here is at the very bottom i don't know how the hell that happened but it did and so like i said i have all these copies and i'm like what the hell happened so people are okay with it being inaccurate right now and then i got it fixed so now the new copies coming in will be completely fixed and i feel so much better and a bit off topic but i remember when I told my grandfather, who is the biggest supporter for all of my writing, but he is a very conservative Christian man that does not like any bad words. So when we got home from watching Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I had asked him, so what if I was a person that created the things that Quentin Tarantino did and all that language and all that violence, would you be okay with that? And he just says, well, they're characters. It's not really a reflection of you. Because you don't cuss, and I'm thinking in my mindset, and like in my mind, I'm like, fuck, well, we'll go with that. When I told him that, I did feel better knowing that when he reads this, he will read it knowing that it's purely to get in character. A lot of the stuff in Inglorious Inc. is a reflective narrative. Watch a tattoo documentary, like the famous one I was told about was Sailor Jerry. Like, you hear fuck a lot. And you do here in tattoo shops. And I've even been in a tattoo shop that has had a nice little yellow painting of fuck nearby. So it is a staple of that word is going to be around. And it is reflective in the narrative. And that was actually kind of fun for me to do. But also not only really that, but the characters who I have as well. Some of it is reflective working in a tattoo shop. And some of it is that's just who they are. But it has been an experience to getting Inglorious Inc. done. I've been very proud of myself and I'm excited to see where this will go since I'm envisioning that there are going to be about five or six, no wait, there's gonna be about four or five more books to come. I've already been starting the process for the second book. I have been devoting more time to writing down the ideas so I can get it shelled out within this year or the next and I'm really hoping I can get it done before this year would be great so I can kind of shell them out and keep them rolling so people know well what's next for Lance Jackson and what's next for Lou and Bullet and Jules and Cassie and the things that they go through. I really want to continue that until there is the ending that I have in mind of what's going to happen to them and I know what's going to happen to them. I just have to work into what will happen to them. Uh, basically I don't know what's going to happen neither do you guys. When the books arrived, <laughs> this was hilarious, uh, I think I almost gave the Amazon Prime driver a heart attack. I remember like seeing the truck, <laughs> actually saying it doesn't do it justice. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. Ooh. Her trucks are trucks are trucks are trucks are trucks are trucks here. I need to get shoes. I need to get things. I need, I need, I need, I need, yeah. no, I can't come. Yeah, can't even get my shoes on. Ugh. I can't even open a door. Huh. Stuff around, man. 
I'm not throwing it. I'm too excited. I got this because I knew it was a tough taste. Wow. Here you go. You're welcome. You like what? I like the front. I like it too. It looks good. Reading it proud Mary on the video. Wait, what'd you say? I said I didn't I just thought maybe John Fogarty was a name for somebody else in the book. No. But I hadn't finished reading the sentence. <laughs> That's a direct reference to you because you like John Fogarty. He read the back. He got to read the first part of it. And so far, he's with the first chapter. He's slacking on it. I keep reminding him that he's got to finish it. And he likes it so far. Well, it was kind of funny that day was when people asked me, like, if I celebrated. And I'm like, I had two pizzas and I started watching Justified. <laughs> like, that was my celebration. <laughs> with the start of... This video being called, you know, I wrote it well, since I have been expanding into different ideas. I'm glad that I can fit writing into there. So I'll be doing some videos about my writing routine and people that I have encountered when I was writing. Any other things that comes to mind or Q and A's. I'm up for anything to start this new writing series on my channel. So I find that to be kind of fun though. I'm like, cool, I get to talk about something I'm very passionate about. So I'm excited about that. You can purchase this bad boy on Amazon. I have an e-Kindle copy, e-Kindle, e-book copy. <laughs> I'm so used to say e-Kindle, I'm so sorry. And a paperback copy available. But before I go, I wanted to give the fuck count for this book. So I'm gonna get my calculator and we're gonna count this out. Now where's my phone? There it is. I've gone per chapter and I have highlighted <laughs> where fuck is said and so i'm just gonna very 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 quickly go through and we're just gonna count because i don't know all i know is that i put a number at the bottom of the page per chapter but i just don't know all i know is i'm guessing i'm gonna spitball an answer and think it's gonna be 235. let's see how close i am seven plus four plus eleven eight thirty two that's <laughs> such a big job <laughs> We got to hurry up because that camera just died and I was on 193 and we're like, not even halfway through. <sighs> the final number is... or whatever it was, as long as the word fuck is present, it is said, and it's 337. I was so off. Oh my god. Thank you so much for watching the first part of my writing videos for this channel. I look forward to making more, and as always, you guys stay awesome and amazing, and achieve whatever it is you want to do. You, you do you, boo. Whatever you gotta do. All right, I am gonna sign off and go finish these things called chores and uh, be an adult. Awesome. Alrighty. Bye.